everyone my name is Jen and welcome to the book refuge and welcome to another recommendations video um, today is just gonna be a dark romance Rex all up um, but before we dive into those I wanted to say a big welcome to a new channel member Sonia Sonia joined at the faded friend level and I'm so excited to have her Sonia thank you so much for supporting the channel it means so much to me that you're willing to put your money where your support is um, and it really just helps continue to encourage me to keep doing what I'm doing. So let's go ahead and dive in. Um, this was one of the recommendations on a recent um, poll that I did. Not a poll, but like a question that I put out is someone just wanted without them being in a specific trope or a, a specific whatever to just have some dark romance wrecks. And it has been a long time since I do that. Um, one of the things I do here, you know, if you've been around for a while, you know this, I do pretty like specific wrecks just because when people are looking for a specific trope I like there to be a video for that because in the past when I look for a specific kind of thing they're hard to find sometimes um but this is also exciting for me because I'm going to talk about some that are just my favorite from the past like uh six months I think most of these are when I read these um and these were all like five or six star reads for me and so I thought it would be fun to just go through those. So I have some of those to go with for us. So I'm just going to dive in. I'm going to try to keep this as one of my quicker recommendations because these are all books that I've talked about at length previously. Um, and some of them are like out of order in series because I like specific books better, you know, than sometimes the beginning of a series. And specifically, I'm starting with Rebel Bitten by... Woo! Bought my camera by Lexi C. Foss. This is book four in her Blood Alliance series. So this book is about um, a kind of rebel, uh, well, okay, that's the name of the title, but it's about a rebel vampire. And in this Blood Alliance world, this is a, this is a paranormal dark romance. There is this world where humans have been subjugated and they basically exist only to be food and fuck toys for the paranormals, which are either vampires or werewolves. And we have this specific um, kind of like a faction leader, even though he's a reluctant leader, he was kind of like forcibly put in this position and he doesn't really want to be there. He is a recluse and likes to be off by himself and doesn't want to be involved in all the drama that's happening with the clans and things like that. But Ryder um, happens to come across this woman who's basically dead at the edge of his property. And it's very clear that she probably came from a nearby breeding facility that belongs to the Lycans. And he takes one look at her and decides that he wants her for himself. In this world that we live in, he's allowed to do something like that. Um, but there's uh, something that's happened to Willow um, that unfolds during the story. That means she's not quite as human as she appears. And the transformation we see her go through and the relationship that builds between the two of them. This is a mix between like... Um, She's never really treated like a slave by him, but she definitely, in the world that she's in, um, humans are, they're not, they're not even slaves. Like, they're below that level, almost. Um, there's no care taken for their life. Um, and throughout this series, like, again, this is book four, there are some different sects of the vampires and lichens that realize that if we keep treating humans this way, the few that we have left, we're going to run out of food. We're going to run out of a way to coexist very soon. And so it's not just, a, I mean, it should be the most important matter, but it's not just a matter of treating humans with dignity and working with them. It's a matter of like, we can't keep doing this or we're going to go extinct. And so some vampires are helping just for selfish reasons because they're like, I don't want to run out of food. Um, there has to be a way that we can both be getting what we need without resorting to this level of, you know, evil. Um, but anyway, I love this book the most in the series for the way that the heroine comes into her own. She started out this very fragile, terrified human, like a lot of them do. Um, and she is just ready to say fuck you to everyone. And Ryder is kind of amused by that because like you literally are nothing. Like you're nothing, but I think that you're something. And you know, I don't want anything to happen to you. So it comes from a selfish place, 
but because of how he feels about Willow and and the way that their relationship is developing, he's willing to let the sex the sect of vampires that is looking to do good to kind of recruit him. And so I really like that because it definitely is a morality chain situation because he is only doing those things so that he can make it a better world for Willow. He could give a fuck about anyone else. And I just, I really like that kind of villainy. So I also cannot wait for the next book in this series. And it's taking forever to come out because she's writing a bunch of other series at the same time. And I'm like, Lexi, just give me my fifth book. I want it. But, you know. Then I have one that I have, like, not heard anyone else talk about. This is called Midnight with the Devil by Emma Castle. Emma Castle wrote the Tarzan retelling that I really love that is called Love in the Wild. That is definitely not a dark romance. Like, it's really not. Um, there are some elements of the plot that, you know, have some thriller aspects, but that's not. This definitely is. This is what it says. We have um, Lucifer Morningstar, who is the devil, and his job is to corrupt souls. And these souls that get corrupted, the purer the soul that he corrupts, the stronger that hell is. And in this case, like, it's kind of a sacrifice that needs to be made because there are, there's real evil that's being held back by hell. And so the purer of a soul that he can corrupt, the better for keeping the gates of hell. And so at the beginning of this book, we have this girl named Diana Kingston and she has, her father is about to die from cancer and she, he gets told that she is the purest soul that he has ever come across before. And if he can corrupt her, it will secure hell's gates for a very long time. So he's like, cool, I'll go and make this offer. So he, he meets with her and he's like, I will free your father if for the next three months, every Friday night, you'll be mine from sundown to sunup. You will come. I can have my wicked way with you. And by the, yes, it is a, it is a sex pact. And if you do that, I will heal your dad. Um, so knowing that, you know, he knows what he's trying to do is to corrupt her and she knows that he healed her father. So she's willing to do whatever he asks her to do. So this is one, this isn't a very long book, so there's not too much else to say about it. I will say I was not expecting where this one went. It has some great, if you really like the show um, Lucifer on um, Netflix, you might really like this. There are a lot of parts of it that reminded me of that because it's Lucifer is living on earth right now, but he still has a lot of powers. Um, and his chemistry with her is like bananas. It's so good. So Midnight with the Devil by Emma Castle. Then there is Truly by Carmel Rhodes. I have recommended this to many people as if you like Untouchable, maybe you'll like this one. Um, some people like this better than Untouchable because we do have a case of a man who, the the bully in this case, he is not a complete, like, psychopath, sociopath like Carter is. Like, there is redemption that is possible for this hero, and I think that a lot of people appreciate that, like, Carter, there is no redeeming him in that story. Like, he pretty much stays who he is the whole way through, and it's up to the heroine to bend to his will, which is a very specific kind of story, and I understand if that doesn't work for everybody. Like, Carter Mahoney fits in his own spot, and, like, he is in that place that is unlike any other. Um, but in this one, we have Noah and we have Truly, and this book starts on high school graduation where she gets dumped by her boyfriend who has a half-brother named Noah. And when she ends up going to the graduation party, um, now she's just all hurt because her boyfriend broke up with her. She runs into Noah and they have an encounter. This is a non-consensual encounter, much in the same that like Untouchable has one of those, but there already are different strings going on because there's a history between the two of them. Um, not like a romantic history, but just like they know each other in a way that like Carter and Zoe didn't really know who each other was in that. And I know I'm comparing it to that a lot. This is a lot different. This is also, I believe this is an interracial romance. Cause yeah, I think, yeah, I'm not sure what race Noah is. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, but he ends up 
Um, so there's this road trip she's supposed to go on with her best friend and Noah ends up wheedling his way into this road trip. So now this man who, this boy man who assaulted her, she is going to have to share a car and a bedroom with him for this entire road trip. And things get very interesting when that happens. So this is very fascinating. I really love this. I think if Untouchable was too much for you, um, this could be another one to try because again, the hero definitely has, there's never a good reason to assault anyone. This is fiction. Know that. But this hero definitely like does more work to better himself than Carter Mahoney. Carter Mahoney is just like either accept me or move along kind of thing. Well, actually I'm not going to let you move along thing. All right, then I have Ruthless Creatures by JT Gessinger. This is a recent release that came out in January. This is a mafia uh, story, um, but it doesn't quite start out that way because our heroine doesn't really know what the hero does. So the hero's name is Cage, and I can't remember. The heroine's name is Natalie, or, or Natasha. Is it Natalie or Natasha? She goes by Nat, so I'm not sure. But... Um, she, her fiance disappeared five years ago and after five years you can um, have the person declared dead finally and so she's feeling a lot of emotions about that. She hasn't been with anyone since her fiance disappeared and her best friend decides to take her out for a night on the town and we end up meeting Cage at a bar and now Cage and her are immediately drawn to each other but he does kind of keep his distance until he shows up in town and has bought the house next door to hers and he starts making himself available to her even though he's gone for long periods of time you as the reader can tell this dude's in the mafia and even her like her best friend can kind of tell what's going on um but it definitely is something that like nat is a little bit clueless to which is fine like why would you just assume someone was with the mafia you know that's not the first conclusion you would jump to but, um, yeah, I don't want to say where this story goes because I was completely like, wow, I had no idea where this was going to go. But this does have a hero who is just completely like ooey and gooey inside just for her. Um, there's a line in here that he says that he's like, you will go on your knees for no one but me. And you go on your knees for me because you know that I see you as my queen and that it isn't in disrespect that you kneel before me. And <laughs> Love it. There's some like light kink going on in this story, but it is an obsessive hero and it is just a fantastic story. And I can't wait for the next one to come out. The next one is going to be about the best friend. Um, and I wish it came out sooner, but I'm also glad that the author is taking her time. So the second book is called Carnal Urges. And what I love is that this series is actually called Queens and Monsters. And so it's literally these like horrible monsters who see their women as queens. And I, I love that. That is the trope that I would just just drop it all for me. That's what I want is this. Then we have another one that is far into the series and that is Filthy Sex by Serena Ackroyd. This is book four in the Filthy Fecker series. Well, it's considered book three because for some reason the first book is considered like a prequel, but it's not. Um, there is definitely a warning in this one that this is the most violent book of them all. And that is true. There are some things that our heroine does that are the bloodiest things that I've read. Okay. Our heroine, she gets in on the murdering in this one, but not in like a serial killer way. Like it's in self-defense, but also so powerful. So this book is about Camille and Brennan. And we've met Camille before in the series. She is a sister to one of our previous heroines. They have a horrible father. He's done horrible things. Camille is actually a crossover character from another series by Serena Ackroyd. This series actually intertwines with this one, but I'm not a huge fan of said series. I've tried the first one and I didn't like it because it's a motorcycle series. Motorcycle books rarely work for me. However, Camille, she was a part of that MC as a club whore. One of the reasons why I didn't like that series, because I just, I can't with like the club, like the bitches calling women bitches and sluts and all that stuff. I just, I can't take very much of it. But she has since come back to her family 
because that was part of the story is that she would have rather have been a club whore to this MC than lived under her father's roof because he was a horrible man. And we know that already because one of our previous heroines is her sister and we saw how she was treated by her father. Anyway, so she decides that she wants to come back and she knows that the only way she'll be safe is if she finds someone for protection. And so she kind of arranges for herself this arranged marriage with Brennan, um, with the help of, um, I don't know if her sister gets involved to help her, but she approaches him with it. And he's like, you know what? I've seen my brothers slowly getting married through this. I think that I would want that for me as well. Camille's as good a person as any. Um, the things that make this one even darker than normal, and I feel like deserve an extra trigger warning, because even though we're doing a dark romance Rex, know this, Camille has been indulging in self-harm, um, for quite a while. So she, she does these particular things. Like one of them is she cuts into her hands. Um, she will cut herself. She will do certain things to herself because she, she's been through a lot. And I mean, when you read her story, I've never felt so compassionate towards someone doing self-harm than I have in this book because it just rips your heart out. And what I love about Brennan is he starts to notice those things. He starts to notice her doing those things and, and, and he notices the cuts and he sees the scars and he's like, okay, you won't be doing that anymore because I'm your protector now and that means even protecting you from yourself. And he's like, if you want those things, if you need pain, there are more recreational ways that we can do those. So I need you to not hurt yourself anymore. If you have those feelings, if you if you need the pain, come see me and we can do this. And you know I love that because I love, I love kink as healing. I love BDSM as healing, as an outlet, as a safety measure. And so the things that we see Brennan do for her and the deeper that they get into their relationship, because this is a woman that not only has she been hurt by her father, but again, that MC that she was a part of did nothing for her. She was someone's whore for years who didn't love her and didn't treat her well. And so to have a man like Brennan who this is an arranged situation. He's still like, that doesn't matter. As soon as you're a part of the filthy feckers, like you're mine and I will take care of you and you won't hurt what's mine. And I love that. I love that. I love when it's used recreationally that way. But again, I wanted to give the extra trigger warning because this isn't just someone who previously hurt herself. We see the scenes of self-harm happen and they are pretty rough. Like I don't struggle with self-harm and this isn't like a, it's not a trigger for me, but it is disturbing and difficult. And then the things where she says this is her most violent ever, there's some pretty violent stuff in here. And I was cheering Camille on when she did them, but just be prepared. You might gag a little bit. <laughs> some of it. But I just, this book was so powerful to me. Um, a couple of my friends have just caught up to the series and like read this. And I'm really, really happy that they did because I needed to share this story with people. And thank you to my best friend Shauna for sending me this for my birthday. To have a physical copy of this book it makes me so happy. Ah! Okay. Then... We got to talk about Deliver by Pam Godwin. So this is a bind up of the first three books in the series. I am specifically talking about Deliver because it's the first book in the series, but I just wanted to show off my beautiful bind up. It's so pretty. This is Deliver, Vanquish, and Disclaim are all in this box set. It's beautiful. Um, but Deliver is the first book in a sex trafficking series and it has a second name that's called the freedom fighters and so the reason that i am again i i say this with caution because i've said in my reviews recently that i don't recommend this series to everyone and that is absolutely true this series has taken me to a new level of like terrifying okay because what's so gut-wrenching when you're reading it is you know that this happens to people and more so than when you're reading a mafia book and you can pretend that that's out of the here or you're reading a paranormal story where vampires don't exist sex traffickers exist and it is a disgusting and terrifying thing but the hidden name for this series which you discover as you read that this series is the freedom fighters and so that all starts with live from deliver and so the beginning of this book, Liv, with her partner Van, are looking for 
a new victim. Now, they kidnap and train slaves to the specifications of their buyers. And so each time it's time for a new slave, and this will be the ninth one that she has kidnapped. Um, well, it will be the ninth one that's been happening because she was actually the first one. Um, and she and Van actually, like, Van broke the rules and um, got her pregnant. And so she couldn't be sold to the buyer. And so as punishment, their child was taken away from them. And now she helps, um, that child is, like, held above their head. And she helps kidnap and train as well. So... That is a bit of a spoiler that I just shared, but this series, I feel like you need the context of it to understand why it's worth it to go through it. But anyway, this this book starts with Liv and Van hunting down the specifications. So the specifications for this boy were to have a male virgin above the age of 18 who is like perfect in every way. And so that means they're going to be looking for a high risk target because males who are virgins and who are clean cut and not into drugs usually are from pretty upscale homes. At least that's the thoughts within this series. And so she settles on this boy named Josh who goes to Baylor and he's actually going there. He's going to be going into ministry studies. And from what Liv can tell, he is a virgin from the research she's done. And so she kidnaps him and brings him back to the house where they do this. And it was a really risky take because his family is like pretty upstanding and he's a good kid and he's popular and people like him, but they make him disappear. And so Josh wakes up in this attic and he's being tortured. They torture him with really loud music playing constantly and Liv goes about trying to break him and train him to be the perfect slave. And Josh is one of the strongest young mans I've ever, I've ever read. And he decides through his faith and it's not overdone. Okay. Pam does this with a lot of things are not done with a light touch, but the one thing she does do with a light touch is kind of the spiritual spirituality of Josh, because there's just enough or like he knows he can see that Liv is hurting just as much as he is. And he knows that there was no one looking for her when she disappeared. But he has people looking for him. And he can see that behind all of this terrifying situation that she doesn't want to be there. Like, he can see that. And so what unfolds in this series, in this book, it actually, like, sets up the whole rest of this series. And it all, like, gets kicked off with with Josh kind of working on Liv in the ways that he can. But that doesn't mean you're not going to see torture. That doesn't mean you're not going to see Liv do some horrible things to Josh. Um, but the beauty about this series is that there is, there is rarely a villain introduced to you that you will not learn to love. And... I don't know like how else to say that without spoiling it for you. That's why I started with Deliver. But this series just got better and better and better for me. And it just shocked me how I could be reading these such disturbing stories and find such hope inside of them. And I don't, I don't know how. Like I don't know how, but I did. I'm still cautioning you that I'm trying to sell this to you, but also I'm not joking. This is about sex trafficking. There is rape happening. There is non-consensual situations happening and you are going to question your sanity for reading this book. So I am not necessarily recommending this. This is my dark romance faves and it's one of my faves. So there you go. All right, then there is Sweet Captivity by Julia Sykes. This is a standalone. However, there is a book called um, Keeping My Sweet Captive, I'm not sure, which is this book from the hero's point of view or the, you know, I have to use this when I talk dark romance heroes because they're not all like heroes. Um, but this is actually about an FBI agent 
who was previously a desk agent. Think kind of like Garcia. I don't mean in like how she looks, but in like the person behind the computer. And she recently became a field agent and she ends up getting caught by a mafia capo and his brother um, is his like torturer. And so to make sure that this woman doesn't know anything about them, he gives this woman to his brother to torture her. Well, this brother decides that he doesn't just want to torture her. He wants her for himself and he wants to protect her. But in doing that, he also has to make it seem like he's broke her. So this is a captor captive. Obviously, it's called uh, Sweet Captivity. And this definitely has BDSM happening in it. And this had a scene that just like made me cry so hard because I love BDSM stories and I love this heroine. Um, this is also a virgin heroine who has done lots of research into BDSM but has never got to like experience it herself. And so that was a really interesting twist at what was happening because this guy is like, how do you know so much about this stuff if you're a virgin? And she's like, I look stuff up. And I was like, yeah, man, you can be a virgin and still know things like, come on. Um, then there is the Kingdom Duet by Rena Kent. This is um, Reign of a King and Rise of a Queen. I just recently read this duet. I know that if you start with the Bully series, um, that this duet might make more sense, but I was okay reading it. This is about um, Jonathan, who is the father of the kid from the bully series and at the beginning of this book that son Aiden is actually getting married and he has an aunt that he's never met who is 15 years younger than um like her older sister was and the older sister is actually dead so this is actually a dead sister's husband romance and I'm like, this video is already taking too long, so I'm not going to go into all of the things with this one. But my mind was not prepared for all the twists and turns. She also is the daughter of a serial killer. And that's why she disappeared for all these years. Is because, like, there was a lot of heat coming towards her for being the daughter of a serial killer. Even though what was she supposed to do? She wasn't any part of it, but, like the court of public opinion decided that she should have known what was happening to these women. So what you gonna do? Um, and then, yeah, at the beginning of this story, he ends up making a deal with her that, well, okay, so what happens is he hasn't seen her in many, many, many years, and she looks exactly like his dead wife does, and he did, he becomes obsessed with her. Apparently not because she looks like his dead wife, but and so he buys her company out from under her, buys a bunch of stocks in her company, and basically says that if she will belong to him for uh, six months, then he will give ownership of her company back to her. So it's one of those. It's very dark that he does that. There's a lot of spanking in this. It's not explicitly said that this is daddy kink, but which was kind of annoying to me because her best friend like calls him daddy all the time and it's like oh what do you do with daddy and so I didn't really like that because I was like if this was going to be daddy kink I wanted it to be between the couple not her best friend imposing that title onto their relationship because there's a lot of spanking that goes on in their relationship he uses that to correct behavior and to make sexy time happen and this is a heroine who does need pain with her pleasure so there's definitely some kink happening and everything um but I just didn't like that her friend was imposing the daddy title on this because I was like, if this was going to be daddy kink, I needed the heroine and the hero to be complicit in it. And that was not the situation. And then the last book that I wanted to mention real quickly was Tears of Tess by Pepper Winters. And I know that I'm really late to this party. This book is quite old at this point. Um, I have read the first two books in this series, but this is a captor captive situation this girl is on vacation with her boyfriend and she ends up getting kidnapped and put into sex trafficking and she ends up getting given as a gift to this guy named master q and there are some secrets about him um which were really cool and reminded me a little bit of the 
Deliver series. This also has BDSM in it. And this is a heroine who just refuses to be broken. She refuses to tell him her name for the longest time, which I really liked because she was like, it is the only thing I own now. My name is the only thing that I own. And I'm not just going to give it up to you. And I just really, really love that. Um, I like that aspect of this story too, that our heroine, before she's kidnapped, she really wants to start experimenting with kind of some like darker things in the bedroom. Not darker things, some kinkier thing, because kink does not mean dark, right? And her boyfriend just treats her so horribly because of it. Not like horrible, horrible, but he kind of shames her because how like... I don't want to spank you. He's like, I don't want to see used toys. Like, am I not enough for you? And I mean, the truth is it's not because she's not getting orgasms or finding satisfaction out of their situations because she, I think part of it is she's not able to communicate like why she wants them. And he's like, maybe you need to talk to a psychiatrist because you want these things. He's like, I don't want to be responsible for hurting you. And so there's really not great communication between the two of them of like why she's wanting these things to happen to her. And so that is like sad to see because you're like that does not mean that there's anything wrong with her because she wants a little bit of kink involved in things and so that's really hard to to see happen to her but once she is put in this sex trafficking situation she carries so much guilt because she's like I wasn't happy with my nice sweet boyfriend and now all these things that I wanted done to me are being forced on me in a non-consensual situation and I deserve this and so that was a really interesting thing to see is this woman who she's been longing for spicier situations to happen and now they are and she feels like she brought it on herself because she was looking for more and so it's very very interesting again i haven't finished this whole series yet i've read books one and two but i wanted to bring it up because i know number one you guys have been recommending that book to me for a long time and number two i did recently read it and had a lot of thoughts on it so there you go so there you go there are some dark romance wrecks some of my favorites over the past couple months let me know what some of yours are um and yeah Thank you again to my new channel member, Sonia. If you would like to check out channel memberships, you can check out the link in my description box. Um, or if you go to the homepage on YouTube um, and you go to my profile, you should see a little join button to learn more about it. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Bye.